Hello folks. Today we're going to focus on surpluses and shortages. Now those are situations in the market where several things may have happened. So we've had an increase in, in demand, we've had an increase in supply or a decrease in supply or demand, and yet the market price, for whatever reason, has not changed. And that results in a disequilibrium. It results in too much in the market, which is a surplus, leftover stuff, or it results in, in too little in the market, uh, which is a situation that we call a shortage, which is too, too, too little stuff, not enough to go around for everybody. We're going to see why that happens right now. We're starting off analyzing our market here. We're going to, we're going to start with the, with the flashlight market. where we have demand for flashlights, we have the supply of flashlights, uh, we have an initial equilibrium here of EQ, an initial price of P, and an initial price of Q. Now I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to assume that a hurricane is, is coming through in the, in the U.S. South, and we would like to see what happens to flashlights. But I'm going to also put a little wrinkle in here to our usual Kepar assumption. I'm going to assume that even though the hurricane is coming through, the supermarket that sells flashlights has not had time to adjust their price to whatever it is that we're going to see that happens here in our market. So remember those two things. News flash that the hurricane is coming. What do people do? Well. Is that a demand issue or a supply issue? First of all, we think, well, it doesn't really affect supply. It might on down the road if we're actually producing flashlights in that part of the United States that's going to be affected by the hurricane. But initially, it's going to be a demand issue. How do people respond? They're going to need more flashlights. They're going to need more batteries. They're going to stock up on things like water and so forth. So in this particular case, the news flash hits that the hurricane is coming. Our demand for flashlights is going to increase. It will shift from D, the initial position, to D1. Now we know based on our analysis that what should happen in the absence of any kind of interference is that the market price should automatically float up from P to P1. And the market quantity should, in this case, automatically increase from Q to Q1. But what happens, remember my initial assumption, what happens if the supermarket doesn't adjust their prices? If the price remains at P, then we, that price intersects our supply at this particular point Q. But it now intersects our new demand curve D1 at this point, which I'll call Q2. Well, what is that? Here's what that means. At this constant held price, this price that the supermarket hasn't moved, only this much is being supply to this flashlight market. Only P, only Q. But the demand for flashlights at this price is way out here at Q2. Q2 is much greater than Q. So we would say here that demand in this case is way outstripping supply. What is that difference right here? The difference between Q and Q2, that is something that we call a shortage. In other words, people are going to go to the market wanting flashlights and they are not going to be able to get them. So, in this case, what has caused the shortage? The shortage has been caused because the supermarket did not allow the price of the flashlight market to naturally float up to P1 and that resulted in a shortage. Very quickly, let's diagram a surplus. I'm going to erase my market 
and recreate a new one. And we're going to assume that this is the sugar market. Demand for sugar, supply for sugar, initial equilibrium, Q and P. I want to assume very quickly here that there's been a technological improvement in the production of sugar that allows sugar producers to produce much more efficiently. And that, that means that they can produce a lot more and have the, the same resource, with the same resources that they had before, an increase in productivity. Well, what happens to, to, to the market for sugar if we have that kind of increase in productivity and yet the, 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 the market price is not allowed to, to, to float up? Let's, or float down. Let, let's see what happens in this case. An increase in productivity in, in, in sugar is going to re result in an increase in supply from S to S1. We know from our analysis that the market price should have floated down to P1 and the market quantity should have increased to, Q, to Q1. But if it didn't, if for whatever reason supermarkets held the price constant here at P, then our, our price is intersecting our demand here at Q, but it's intersecting our new supply curve way out here at something I would call Q2. So what's that mean? It means that this artificially now high price, only Q is demanded. But at this artificially, supply, artificially high supply, producers are much more willing to have a lot of extra supply available for people. So this amount, Q2, is available in the market. What is that difference here? Supply is outstripping demand. Q is 2 is much greater than Q. Well, that is called a surplus. If the supermarket does not lower their price of the sugar in this particular case, they're going to have unsold material. We're going to have some more practice problems on that, and I hope that that made sense. We'll see you soon.